Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Suchi, my dear friend, you're in New Delhi today, right? Looks like you're at home. Yes, I am at home now. How's the weather? Weather here in Delhi is hot, really hot and sunny. Uh, yesterday it rained a lot, but today there's no rain at all. So it's really hot and humid. Uh -huh. So pretty much like when I was there? Mm, even worse, I would say. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> I can see you've got the fan on. I've got the AC on actually. Oh, So lucky. <laughs> um, Suchi, please introduce yourself and um, tell us about your job. Tell us who you are and what you do. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Suchi Gurk. I'm currently working at Acquia as manager technical services. Uh, as part of my job, my day-to-day -day job involves Uh, technical architecture of products, management and development of team, uh, taking care of the team, mentoring the team, doing Drupal.org uh, and community uh, involvement and stuff like that. Tell me a little bit more about uh, the community involvement and the Drupal.org stuff. All right. Um, on Drupal.org, I try to uh, go through the issue queues. I try to commit patches if possible. I have, uh, in the last few months, I have been able to do two core commits as well. Uh, but as when it comes to community, we do, do have Drupal camps uh, all over India, and I try to attend them as much as I can. I have been part of Drupal, Con, Drupal Camp Mumbai, Drupal Camp Pune, Drupal Camp Delhi every year for the last five years. In addition, I have been... Um, I went to DrupalCon Munich. I went to DrupalCon Barcelona, where I presented a session as well. Uh, I also presented a session at DrupalCon Asia. Wow. You have two um, Drupal 8 core commits? That's so cool. What, what were right. they? Uh, they are, uh, my Drupal 8 core com commits are not uh, very, I would not say that they're very smart. <laughs> It's just very small, basic uh, things wherein Uh, some of the parameters of the functions were not correct. I went ahead and solved them and gave out patches for that. Well, thank you so much. I mean, if you hadn't have fixed them, somebody else would have had to deal with that. So that's the, I mean, that's the thing where uh, now it works better for me and it works better for you and it works better for everybody, right? That's right. What's the, what's the sort of, what's the benefit to you from contribution? Why? Why do you contribute or, or even care about the community? You can just have this software and use it for free, you know. Yes, I can use the software for free. But if everybody thought like this, then how would the improvements in the software happen? If everybody thought that, okay, let me just use the software and not try and improve it, how will the software improve how will we have bug fixes even i mean even if somebody is using a particular module or even if somebody uh, sees a bug and go goes ahead and reports the bug that is some sort of contribution in my opinion and unless until somebody reports a bug how would somebody else know that yes this is a bug i need to uh, let me just i know the solution to it i'll just go in and fix it and because that person found the bug and the second person fixed the bug now the whole Drupal is much better for, for thousands of people, so I, mean, I mean tens of thousands of people to use. So it is important for me to contribute because if I don't think this way and nobody else thinks that way, that's not open source, that's not a contribution, that's not uh, a, an open source software, that's not how, how things work. What would you say about someone who makes a money uh, makes money makes a living with open source software but doesn't contribute 
<laughs> I know of so many people who make money out of open source software, but they don't contribute back. And well, I mean, I don't want to be negative about people. I would just say to each his or her own, but I would just think it's fair that if you are using something for free specifically, and if you are gaining something out of it, why not give something back as well? That's, that's, that should be the spirit. If people, but if people just don't do it, it's, it's their own mentality, it's their own thought process. I would not come, like to comment on that. So I don't want to imply that there's a, you know, a moral case that it's right or it's wrong. But mm -hmm. I have the feeling that if you, uh, in the case of Drupal, in the case of open source software, um, if you use it uh, and really fully engage with it, if you make a contribution um, uh, technically to the software or, you know, support uh, a, a code sprint where the software gets better or help the community or help teach new people. If you are actually engaged with it, I have the feeling that you can get a lot more out of it than if you just download it and, and use it. What do you say about that? I totally agree with you. I mean, if you are engaged with the software, if you are engaged with the community, it helps you in your growth as well. Of course, it helps the community, but it helps you a lot because it's not always that you can teach others. When you are in touch with people, when you are part of community, and when you're trying to give, there's so much to learn from others as well. Take, for example, a simple code sprint. If you are trying to mentor a code sprint, there are so many smart people. They might know not know how to do a commit to Drupal.org, yes, but the solution they came up with might be just too, too, too good, and you learned a new way of doing things. So, Community in any ways is always better. I mean, being uh, involved in the community is always good for everybody, not only for the person who's trying to organize things, but also for 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 the people who are trying to you know learn, or even if they're just trying to help others, even then, then also they learn a lot. So and you're saying, wait, you're saying that other smart people show up and we can learn from them too? <laughs> Yes, of course. Other smart people, of course, show up. That's what uh, a sprint is all about. If I'm organizing a code sprint and, and 10 people join up, I'm sure that 50% of them, them are smarter than me and I can learn a lot from them. And I'm sure that all of them are smarter than me, so that works out just fine. So listen, um, tell me, just a little bit about your your career, your technical background. Okay, let me start from my education. I did my bachelor's in computer science followed by uh, the post-grad in business administration. And uh, I did it, that in finance and marketing. My first job was an executive assistant, which was, which was totally away from computer science. First two, three years, I was involved in executive assistance related work. And suddenly I was just pushed into the computer world because our IT managers ran away or something. And there was nobody else with any kind of computer background. I was the only one. So, and, and the person who was heading all this, he was sitting in the US, I was sitting in Delhi. And he, and I'm talking about 2000, 1999, 2000. And he's at that time Yahoo Messenger was there. And he just pinged me and said, So so the server is down, the com company server was down, and he wanted me to go ahead into and SSH into the server and do some stuff. And I was like, I've never ever done that. He said, Okay, I'm giving you the commands, you just go and do it. Because he could not do it from the US. I said, Okay, let me try. And that's how I entered the IT world. Within within like a few months of this thing. I had started programming in PHP. PHP was something I had never ever heard about, but I started programming in it. I was the only programmer in the company and I went ahead and created a, a project software, a project management software for a 300 plus company, which had timesheet management, which had task management, which had project management and everything. It was in core PHP plus Postgres. 
So that's how I came into the world of computing. Um, this was followed by, this job was followed by a telecom job, which was again in a, a, as a PHP dev. But there I started coming into the world of content management systems. The first content management system that I ever worked on was movable type. That's a Perl thing. That's not a PHP thing. But there I started working with WordPress. I worked a bit on Magento. And I started working on Drupal. And that was, I think, 2005. I started working on Drupal 4.8. And uh, that's how I came into the world of Drupal, actually. So you encountered Drupal at work? Yes, I encountered Drupal at work. What was the, what was the first project? What was the first thing you did with Drupal? Uh, OK, so the company I was working wa with was a travel portal. So they had a lot of blogs and travel kind of stuff. And the first thing was uh, their, the, the company's name was Boots and All. And the first thing that we had to do was uh, their main site needed to be converted into, um, uh, into uh, Drupal. So at that time, I had written PHP scripts to migrate content from, I don't remember what other system was it. Or maybe it was not even a, P, a content management system. It was called PHP. But I knew that the databases of both the things. So I actually wrote scripts which migrated more than 15,000 articles from the earlier, con, uh, earlier uh, PHP thing into Drupal, and that's how I started. And that was Drupal 4.8. What Eight. year was that? 2005, 2005, 2006, that time. Whose decision was it to choose Drupal for that project? Um, that, was, uh, that was a decision of my employer. He suddenly heard that, OK, there is a content management system which can help us out. And because the earlier system was in core PHP and it was a homegrown management system, he decided let's move. So it was his decision. And um, I was, I mean, there were just two programmers, two developers, including me. And I was like, okay, just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and do it. We should be able to do it. But now I see, I just remember what tall I did. And I, I, I think like, OK, that was not at all as for the best practices, but I did it. <laughs> and it worked, right? It worked. It worked. Absolutely. In, two th in 2005, when your employer came and said, OK, we're doing Drupal now, um, did, did it look like a career path? Was that something that people were talking about? No. In 2005, Drupal was fairly unknown. In fact, WordPress, WordPress had much more traction at that time. Uh, so I did not think that that Drupal would have been a would be a career path for me. I was from a PHP core PHP background. And I knew I could go into any of these uh, my, uh, CMSs. So that was not a concern for me. And that's why I went ahead. But I did not think that Drupal would have been would become a career path for me. Because if I look at my career as of now, since 2009 till now 2016, I'm talking about seven years, I have not worked in any other technology. I worked in only Drupal. Start your next statement and say, Drupal has changed my career, dot, 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 dot. Like, how has Drupal, how has Drupal changed your career? So I started off, I mean, my programming career started off in around about 2000, even though my actual professional career started in 1997. But my programming or software related career started in around about 2000 with core PHP. And from 2000 till 2006, I had been doing core PHP only. And 2005, 2006 was the time I was introduced to Drupal. And from then till now, I haven't touched any other uh, I haven't worked in any other technology at all. So from a core PHP person to a person who is now a technical architect in Drupal, that's how uh, 
I, I have changed and that's how it has changed me. That's how I have learned. So that's how my career has changed considerably because of Drupal. Wow. wow. I mean, uh, it certainly feels like um, quite, quite a big influence. You've been doing it uh, for 11 years now. Wow. That's right. I've been doing Drupal for about 11 years now. So you and I actually started right about the same time. Now I know that. Yes, we did. <laughs> Although I know that I installed Drupal 4.6 uh, at one point. And no, I think I started with 4.08 only and not 4.6. Mm. Uh, be happy. Just be just <laughs> be happy about that. <laughs> See, I I installed the latest version. It was your problem that you installed an older version. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me, so tell me, Suchi. Um, yeah. Nowadays, does does Drupal look like a career? What to, should should people? How should people? Young people, maybe especially, think about that. Of course, Drupal is a full time career now. There's no doubt about that. I mean, if I look at my career, for example, in the near future, at least, I don't see myself going away from Drupal. I don't see myself going into any other technology because of the fact that there is so much happening here. There is so much growth here. If in the, as I, uh, I said earlier that to, in 2009, I started with Drupal and I have been working in Drupal since 2009 and nothing else. And I have been growing and growing and growing. It's not that my career has stagnated and I see further growth. So Drupal as a career is a really big option nowadays. So, so make a pitch for Drupal for, for, for people starting out who want to do something with the web or with computers. Tell them, tell them, what, tell them what you see. If you are a fresher and if you have ju you're just starting out your career, I think getting the hang of Drupal, trying to learn Drupal would be something that would be really beneficial for you. And the reason behind that is that Drupal uh, has a very strong, strong, strong community. So your whatever you do or whatever you uh, whatever you try to do, you will have a lot of support in doing that. That is number one. And there are, nowadays, there are so many career options available in Drupal. If I look in India itself, for example, just go to any of the job portals and type Drupal there, and you'll find thousands of jobs there. So if you're trying to, you're a fresher and you're trying to get into the job market, I think learning Drupal is a very good bet for you nowadays. What would you say the coolest thing is that you've done with that you've ever done with Drupal? <laughs> I cannot pinpoint on one coolest thing I've done. I mean, I I get a sense of exhilaration almost like every week in what I do. So whenever I am able to. Uh, I mean, at, at this moment, my role is not about core development or, or no, not really going into the, the development, but making sure that my team is not stuck in anything. So whenever my, my team is stuck in development, I, am, I try to help them out. And whenever something really complex can, comes up, the team is not able to solve, that's when I step in. And when we are able to stop, to, you know, whenever, whenever I'm able to unblock my team, I just feel too good about that. And I think this feeling of exhilaration, I've done so, so many projects in Drupal and I have done so many different things in Drupal. I somehow now feel that when it comes to web space, Drupal can actually do anything. Drupal can, we can create any kind of website using just Drupal. We don't need to, you know, we can't say that this thing cannot be done in Drupal. That's what I feel. Uh, working, I mean, for, I've been working for so long in Drupal. Now I'm very sure of this. Like we can do everything in Drupal. How have your feelings about Drupal changed over time? Um, you just thought it was another, uh, just another project when you did the Boots and All website, right? Um, yes. 
and you just thought, okay, this is some PHP. Let me do this website. Um, how did you how did you feel then uh, about it? And and how do you feel about Drupal now? Has that changed over time? My feeling about Drupal in 2009 or 2005 versus my feeling now is like polar opposites. When I started out in 2005, 2006, the community was also not that strong and people were not very aware of Drupal. I did not know about any Drupal camps. In India, especially, there was no Drupal awareness. Uh, in US, maybe. So I was not aware of a lot of stuff. So when I had to do something for my site, I just I tried to search for it on the web. And I, if I did not find it, I just you know went ahead and did whatever I figured out. But if I look at it today, the community is so, so, so strong that if you try to search on Drupal.org for your problem, there's 95% chance that somebody else has faced the same issue. Even if somebody has not faced, uh, faced the same issue, there are so many channels where you can go ahead and ask for support. And so that aspect of Drupal has changed considerably. Technically also Drupal has changed, but I think the most important thing that has changed is of course the community support as compared to 10 years back and now. So how do you feel about that? Of course, it's a very, very positive feeling. That's what makes us strong. That's what makes Drupal strong. So for you personally, how much uh, uh do, doing drupal all the time how much is how much feels like work and how much is is passion i love to work in drupal i love to get deep into the code and find out why something is not working or why something is working the way it is working so there are some parts of my job which are job, but there are the other parts when I dig deep into Drupal. And that's when the passion part comes in because I just love looking at the code. Um, that was one of the feedback given to me as well, that now that you're growing the ladder of, you know, uh, in, in the hierarchy, you need to get away a bit from the code, but that's something I'm not able to do because I love to get into it a, a lot. So I think that's my passion. I love doing Drupal. And as I, say, I said earlier as well, I don't foresee, in the near future at least, I don't foresee my career without Drupal. So was there a moment when, when it became, um, was there a moment that it became more than a job? Was there a moment that, that uh, you know, like something happened and, and you realized this was so much more? No, there was not a single sudden moment where I realized that Drupal is my passion or Drupal is changing my career path. This was more of a gradual process. The more I started working with Drupal, the more I started knowing Drupal and learning Drupal, the more attached I started becoming to it and the more passionate I started becoming to it. So I would not say that there was uh, one sudden moment that made the change for me think about a time that you contributed to drupal in one way or another you know what what was it and and why did you why did you do that i have contributed to drupal in several ways but one of the ways i really love to contribute to is by conducting trainings i regularly conduct trainings specifically on you know, Drupal in a day, so that people who are not aware of Drupal at all, they get to know Drupal and they get to understand what Drupal can do. I'll just tell you one instance. Uh, that was one of the Drupal camps in Delhi. And I was doing a Drupal in a day training. And one of the groups in that training were school students who were they had come with their teacher. There were five or six students. They had come with their teacher. And uh, they were just in 11th or 12th standard. And uh, I, at the end of the training, they actually came to me and said that they really 
loved what I tried to tell them. They were my trainings are normally very hands-on. So they said that yes, they were able to actually make a website on their on their machine, and they would like to go ahead and go deeper into Drupal because Drupal they really loved the way it worked. So that's that was one of the moments I really loved and realized that you know doing trainings like this can really change people. That sounds incredibly rewarding. It is incredibly, incredibly rewarding. When somebody comes to you after a training and says, even if somebody says that, yes, I learned something today, that itself gives you a satisfaction that, yes, you gave, a, a, gave something good. You did something good today. Why should people take it to the next level with, with their involvement um, you know, in Drupal? Why did you decide to get more involved with Drupal? People should take it to the next level because I would say that's the that's the way ahead. That's the way that you can actually make Drupal strong. We have always said that Drupal for for Drupal, you come for the code, but you stay for the community. And how will the community be stronger unless and until you go ahead and try to contribute? And contribution can be in many ways. It can be code, it can be documentation, it can be bug, it can be even organizing an event, and it can be training. So there are so many ways you can contribute. But unless or until somebody does that, if everybody does not get involved, how will the whole community improve? And how will the whole experience, the whole Drupal experience, that will not evolve over time. So it's very, very important for whoever can, they should try to get into the next level of contribution. And talk about some of the things that people can get out of really being involved, really engaging, and 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 being a part of it, contributing. Uh, contribution is important, and being involved with the community is very important. Yes, number one, it does make Drupal stronger. That is very important. Yes, but it does make the person also very. Uh, it it helps the person grow as well. <clears throat> Um, when you are interacting with five different people from five different places at a community event, each and every one of them has something to bring to the table. And when something like that happens, each and every one of those five people gains a lot. So that is number one. Number two, even, even talking to other people about, even if you're not trying to to help them in learning something, even telling them about, let's say, a bug that you faced. When you're telling somebody about a bug you faced, you're essentially contributing to the community in some way or the other, because it is possible that you had a bug, somebody else had a, had the same bug. And now two people can join their heads together and try to find out a solution, or maybe talk to a third person and try to find out a solution. So. Contributing in any any form is a really, really important part for the community as well as for the person himself or herself. What is your favorite thing about Drupal and why? My favorite thing about Drupal? That's a very vague question, I would say. I mean, there's so many things in Drupal that Oh, okay. If I if I talk, I, I love the community of Drupal. I just love the community of Drupal. I have been fortunate enough to attend three Drupal cons and countless Drupal camps, and just meeting the people and getting the vibe of those people. I think that's that's just that's just something else. You being in a Drupal con or being in a Drupal camp and being with like-minded people. That's just totally different experience. I think I love that a lot. How has Drupal enabled you to make a difference to other people, to make a difference in the world? I'm not sure how Drupal has helped me to make a difference in other, other people, other people's life. But because of the fact that I... And I think I know a bit of Drupal, and I think 
uh, that I am able to give out trainings to people who don't know anything about Drupal. When I, when I give a, a simple training, uh, let's say just a one day training where the, I'm, I'm just introducing Drupal to people. And when out of 100 of those, when even five of those come to me and say to me that, yes, they will try to do more in Drupal. I think in some ways I have gone ahead and make a difference in, their, in the way they want to pursue their work or, or their I don't know if they want to use it for their personal blog or for whatever. But in some ways, because I have introduced you, them to Drupal, in some ways, I have made a difference in their life. So I think training is one way I have tried to make a difference in the lives of people. Well, training, I mean, that that enabling them to, you know, have a career or, you know, put communicate, build a community on the web or, or, or start their own company. That's enormous. Um, yes. Thank you for that. Thank you. That's fantastic. Um, whew. So all big questions today. None of the, none of the, you know, little inconsequential stuff, right? All the, the heavy, um, you know, big meaning stuff. Hey, Suchi, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. And I look forward to seeing you soon um you know maybe in india again maybe at a drupal event i would uh, i'm looking forward to it anyway thank you so much thank you again for taking the time to talk with me thanks a lot bye bye so Talk about the craziest shopping expedition that you ever had to take friends on through Delhi. <laughs> Are you trying to talk about yours? <laughs> I don't know. Wasn't... Everybody seemed everybody seemed to be very surprised at what was on my shopping list. Uh, I think uh, Mixi as a as an item of your shopping list was something that everybody was really surprised about. <laughs> but other than that, clothes is something <laughs> almost everybody buys. So, but Mixi, yes, was. I just plugged it in and used it for the first time today, and my pasta came out delicious. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> <Most> <laughs> <back>. <laughs> So everybody who's listening out there, it turns out that the single most common kitchen appliance in India is something that um, no none of us in the West have ever heard of. And they call it a mixi. And it's not just a blender and it's not just a food processor. It's this amazing other thing. And um, I have one at home. <laughs>